Friday, Simpsonville, South Carolina. Sun's finally broken through. We've had a rainy couple of days. Uh, you might have liked that little cartoon as uh, you entered into the video. Which one of us doesn't like to eat? I mean, it's an incredibly good pastime, isn't it? Especially having just come past Thanksgiving when you could make a sandwich like Dagwood did uh, with the turkey and the stuffing and cranberry sauce and all of the lettuce, tomato, and everything else. Well, Jesus used even times of food, eating around the table, as a teaching time. We're in chapter 4 of Luke. Excuse me, we're in chapter 14 of Luke. And uh, he began telling him a parable. And he said, he began speaking a parable to the invited guest when he noticed how they had been picking out the places of honor at the table. When you're invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for someone more distinguished than you may have been invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, Give your place to this man, and then, in disgrace, you proceed to occupy the last place. But when you're invited, go and recline at the last place, so that when the one who has invited you comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will have honor in the sight of all are, that are at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Have you noticed over the last several devotions, uh, over the last couple of months, how many times Jesus talks about a humble spirit? He warns against pride, and he contrasts constantly pride and ego with humility. He took this time of uh, his guests coming to eat and for him to be eating to bring home that point once again about how humility is such an important part of our lives. And uh, then he goes on in verse 12 and he says, And he also went on to say to the one who has invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives, or your rich neighbors. Otherwise, they may also, so that they may also invite you in return, and that will be your repayment. But when you give a reception, invite poor, crippled, lame, blind, and you'll be blessed since they do not have the means to repay you. For you'll be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. What a neat teaching he gave. And, and uh, I was humbled as we celebrated Thanksgiving that the church that we attend in Landrum, South Carolina, First Baptist Landrum, served over 400 meals to people on Thanksgiving Day that were not able to fix a nice meal for themselves. Some were just elderly. They had the means, uh, but they were elderly, and it was just a, an awful task to try to fix a meal. Some uh, were poor, out of work. Some were those that were not very clean or perhaps didn't have very nice living accommodations. Uh, over a hundred people came and ate in the fellowship hall and over 300 meals were delivered to people in the community. During the time in the fellowship hall, one person came to accept Christ as Savior. You see, most of those people won't be able to return what they received. But then it says here very clearly that there's a promise in the resurrection of the righteous you'll get your reward. I think all of us could learn from these two illustrations about humility and pride and about offering to others who can't help themselves or who don't have the means. Now let me tell you a little postscript. There's one man that comes to this dinner every year. He has the means. But he loves to see how the church is working in charitable work. And as he leaves, in return for his 5 or $6 dinner, uh, he gives them a check. It's usually enough to cover the entire preparation of all of the meals. A large check, a generous check. Uh, they didn't have to wait uh, until the resurrection for all of the rewards of their efforts. But think about all of those families who gave up their own Thanksgiving to help others have a nice Thanksgiving. That's your thought for the day. God bless you and have a good day.